Hey guys, it's Emac here. Today I want to talk about the tools that I use on a daily basis um, to develop, you know, systems, uh, work on the front end, back end, database, AWS, things like that. So you guys get a good understanding about what type of uh, tools and applications pro software engineers use on a daily basis to basically accomplish their, their tasks and projects. So let's just start with the easiest one, which is web browser. Having a good web browser is probably one of the most important things for front-end developer and of course back-end one. But uh, in front-end development, you wanna make sure you always have a good uh, you know, browser like Google Chrome. Uh, and that's the one I recommend. Of course, Firefox offers a lot of you know, good developer community. I personally use uh, Google Chrome since it has a very good developer tools and uh, uh, has different modes for responsive uh, development and things like that. So um, that's the first one. The second tool is to have a very, very good calculator. So if you are a pro software engineer, you're probably doing a lot of calculations. Uh, sometimes we don't pay attention to time complexity and uh, you know memory complexity, and we don't calculate those as our application grows, the traffic grows. So we have to always uh, calculate and run the numbers to make sure as a good engineer, we always understand the patterns. Visual Studio Code is the third tool that I use. Uh, it's uh, awesome for Node.js, for um, uh, Spring Boot actually. Uh, I've used it. Uh, it's a great, great uh, for React application, JavaScript. So basically it's an awesome free tool that you can install on your Linux and of course, uh, you know, Mac or uh, Windows and start using it. It's, uh, it's so easy to use terminal in it. It comes with a very great community and people develop a bunch of awesome tools for Visual Studio Code. And actually it's one of my favorite tools. The next one is Atom. Atom is actually a tool for uh, you know, development. I use, sometimes I use it as a you know, text editor and sometimes I use it for front end uh, or maybe you know, a code editor if I'm uh, modifying a CSS file or you know, uh, JavaScript or JSON file, it's a great, uh, again, tool uh, for that. So as far as database, uh, I personally have uh, three types of database always running on my machine. One of them is SQL Server, since I've been working on it for about 20 years. Um, and MySQL, of course, is one of my favorite databases. And PostgreSQL, it's the uh, other one that I always have on my machine. Uh, my favorite language, Java. Uh, you want to make sure you always have Java on your machine and uh, probably, you know, uh, Eclipse or IntelliJ. I personally use Eclipse and, um, you know, I've been using it for a long time for Java application development. And if you are developing Spring Boot application, you can use Eclipse, but I use uh, SDS, which is Spring uh, Tools, uh, basically Suite. And um, it basically comes with a lot of pre-built functions in order to make your development faster for Spring Boot projects. So, uh, the next tool uh, that I install on my machine are always is Git uh, in order to make sure that I can use AWS Code Commit or GitHub so I can interact uh, with, uh, you know, code repository. Also, uh, I use the same um, Git shell basically in order to perform a lot of, you know, to run my Python application, to call, invoke other functions in different programs. So basically, you want to always have a great terminal skills uh, because the scripting skills and you know knowing how to work with command lines it's a must learn for any uh, software developer especially pro ones always we always have terminal up and running our machine so um, the next tool is virtual uh, box is if you are testing your system on different platforms i always have it up uh, of course python uh, the next favorite language imagine you're building an application in python 2.7 and uh, it comes with a lot of, you know, dependency, you install all those dependencies and then uh, you have, you're maintaining another application in Python 3. So if you update one library, uh, of course it's going to affect the other project uh, and this is not something you want to do in, in real life. So what you want to do, you want to make sure you use something called virtual ENV, which is virtual environment. And it basically creates a separate environment for every single deployment. So your 2.7 deployment uh, programming line will, you know, keep and maintain its own uh, libraries while your uh, Python 3 project, you know, it's relying on its own, uh, you know, libraries and dependencies. So this is a something, you know, really, really uh, helpful in Python development. But of course, when you install pip in Python, you can always add remove libraries using pip. So Python is always one of the you know applic first applications that I install my, on my machine since I do a lot of automation and you know programming using Python. 
Well, the next one, of course, is Microsoft Office. I always have it. You receive a bunch of files. Adobe is the next one. You always want to make sure you don't waste time opening different formats. You don't have the application. Now you got to look for the key. So make sure you set up your station. Sometimes I spend, you know, a day to just get my station to a point that I want. And majority of time I create snapshot of my machine. So I'll always have, you know, a, a master version that I can run throughout my computers. Uh, I, let's say I have like uh, three, four computers and laptops at an, an office, and then I have like four or five computers and laptops and home. So, uh, and I'll always sync those, you know, together and they always run different, same versions. Uh, they all have Python. So I don't think about it. Do I have Python on this machine or no? So I always set up my uh, machine in a, you know, very specific format and uh, prescription basically. Well, uh, so we talked about Git, we talked about Office, and the way I basically sync the code between all my machine, eight, 10 machines, is basically by using a Dropbox uh, and also Google Drive uh, and Code Commit, of course, and GitHub. Those are the things that you, know, you can use in order to uh, basically share your code if you're in Office uh, and it's a Dropbox folder. As you're saving your document, when you get home, the document is on the other computer and ready to uh, proceed. So AWS CLI, uh, of course, when you want to work with it and you PowerShell, of course, AWS uh, uh, PowerShell plugin, you want to definitely install that. Uh, let me tell you this. The next two is a, a, a Notepad++. I love the Notepad++ because I can change the language and I can change the format and tell Notepad what format that I'm actually working with. So make sure you Take advantage of Note, simple Notepad, nothing complex. Uh, note everything, document everything that you're working on. It's actually a great way to, you know, when you go back to look at your project, you have a great, uh, you know, reference to look at. And I, al I always have Notepad open on my, uh, you know, my machine. Uh, even if I'm looking at the JSON file, uh, when you open it, you can simply just switch to JSON. So it will keep the format nice and neat and clean. So Postmate is the next tool that I use uh, when I develop uh, Spring Boot applications and I want to test uh, RESTful API. Postmate, of course, it's an awesome tool that you can use during uh, in basically developing a RESTful application. Apache, of course, I have it on my machine while I'm uh, running Java application and deploying. I want to test my application. Uh, I uh, definitely install Node.js. Uh, so when I open my Visual Studio code, I could just do simply npm create react app and you know start just developing my um, basically react app if i'm doing node.js simply node.js angular same thing so it's so easy as uh, once you have the packet manager like npm installed uh, pip installed git installed everything is basically ready just to go so you don't have to waste time during the development and thinking process uh, figuring out you know things that you need to install your machine and look for the different versions so uh, keep track of the documents i use google drive all the time and uh, you know from spreadsheet to uh, documenting my thoughts and google keep in order to make note i can open it uh, on my phone on my uh, chromebox uh, chromebook and on my laptop and basically update my thought process on a project um, and it's a great tool to basically keep track of your uh, projects and also uh, in Gmail you have a on the right side you have a, in the web interface you have a place you can actually manage your task that's a great way to keep track of your task I use Docker uh, I install Docker on all, all my machines so so I can have containers and test them uh, of course I use Putty a lot uh, Putty is an, a basically a, a, an application it's an open source terminal simulator uh, if you're working with firewalls or routers or things like that, and basically Putty is a great way to connect to, uh, you know, the uh, the device. Even you can connect it to your EC2. You can uh, basically pre-inject the key, and you can create a profile and just click on it automatically without uh, basically uh, typing the use username password every single time. If you want to SSH into your uh, EC2 instance, that's a great way to to log into it. Uh, Visual Studio, I do have it on my machine uh, I, because I still, you know, have projects in C Sharp and I still, you know, have to maintain those applications. But uh, I have it on my machine. I don't do any new development on, on Microsoft technologies anymore, but uh, I'm a, like uh, more Java, Python, Node and uh, um, those type of application guy. And uh, 
uh, I have a program called KeePass. It's an awesome tool. Uh, it does. Uh, it basically follows a great pattern in terms of security. Uh, so you can keep all your passwords and all you need to do is just to remember one password. Make sure you have a good antivirus so you don't lose your files, your machine. I understand uh, these days you can use cloud, you know, backups, things like that. But uh, it's always time consuming to go back and basically deal with uh, virus infection. Uh, I use Bugzilla in order to keep track of bugs in applications. Uh, that's pretty much it. And also I use a tool called Jink uh, for, uh, of course, you know, taking a screenshot uh, of my desktop. Listen, this is not a must go. Uh, should give you some idea that uh, what type of tools, you know, pro, app, pro software engineers use on a daily basis and um, how do we deal with different, you know, layers of complexity in our daily job. So uh, if you're a front end developer, of course, you probably don't need a lot of database uh, installed on your machine. If you're a back end uh, guy, um, you might not need, uh, you know, all the front end. But if you're a full stack, of course, you need to have all these uh, applications. So I recommend you create a master list of what the version, what the, you know, basically source that you download the application. Let's say you install Java, you put the link next to it and you put the version. So on all your machines, you can always have, take a look at the same reference and keep your environment consistent and good. Listen, uh, again, this is just, uh, you know, the list that I use. This, these are the applications that I use. I might change it tomorrow. This is not something that I say you have to use. But uh, I hope uh, it was just helpful to give you some idea, uh, you know, about the tools that I use on a daily basis. I'm a, you know, a big fan of Linux and open source systems. And uh, I do have uh, Windows uh, everywhere pretty much. And I have to work with it because of the projects that we are dealing with and the systems and applications that we're relying on. But uh, my to go for programming, of course, is Linux because of the real reliability, security, scalability. Uh, you know, not being worried about installing an application and rebooting my machine, things like that. Of course, Linux is so reliable and, uh, you know, consistent. So that's one reason I use Linux for my, for my development. But uh, definitely Windows is everywhere and we all use it. I'm not a Mac guy, but if you are using Mac, uh, there's a lot of these tools that are available like Visual Studio Code for Mac. Uh, you can use Sublime and all different uh, type of, types of application for your Mac. I hope you like this video. Subscribe to my channel and like this video. Uh, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.